Let's talk about text animators. Today I'm going to be diving into the workflow of how you could use them inside of Premiere Pro into After Effects, and we're going to be covering five different text layers. I have an asset down below to where you can follow along with this tutorial. So I made it really, really easy. The first four are exactly three seconds long, and then the fifth one is four seconds and 11 frames, and they all start at 7.01. So if you want to do T on your keyboard, we are going to be using Montserrat Black at 100 for the font size. And we are going to type out, you are the enter best in the biz. I'm going to do control A. I have my essential graphics open. If you can't find that, that's in window, essential graphics. And I'm going to align my text and center it with this center align text tool. Go ahead and align your text and all is well in the world. Okay, so we have our text layer in our timeline. For this example, we're just using one text layer, so we're gonna divide it up and act like we're animating different pieces of text. I just try to make this as easy as possible. So we're gonna drag this out till 2312 is when this officially stops for our text layer. Now, as I said before, these are only three seconds long. So if we go to 701, we just need to go to 1001, and I'm gonna make a mark. All right, going to make a mark with M, and then I'm going to repeat this process. All right, I made all of my marks. I'm just going to hit the razor tool C on your keyboard, and I'm going to make my cuts. There we go. So I technically have five different text layers. So now with our example, you know, not too much is going on, but this is usually going to be maybe the second to third last thing that you're going to do. Sound design, with my experience, I usually round out my edits doing sound. But this is one of the things that can take a little bit of time. So I try to save this as one of the last things that I do. And more importantly, on your timeline, you want them all to be on the same video track. I'll repeat that. You want them on the same video track. And you'll see why. So let's go ahead and highlight all these text layers. Right click and do replace After Effects composition. Go ahead and save your After Effects project where you can find it. And guess what? All of what we need are now their own compositions, all of these text layers. So we can double click and we can see the exact size that these text layers are. So my first one matches perfectly. OK, let's go to the second one. Oh, it's a little bit further in our timeline. So it's mimicking what we just copied over. All right, I'm going to go back to the original compositions, go to the first one and let's do our first animation. So the first thing we want to do when we start is let's go ahead and select our text layer and do control alt home. And what this is going to do, if you already didn't see it, is it's going to pull down your anchor point right in the middle of your range. So going forward, let's look at our text layer as a range of characters. That is how the range selector interprets these layers. Last little thing to set this up, we want a little bit of pizzazz. So we want to right click over where it says layer name or source name and we want to open up columns and make sure that you have your switches enabled. And your switches should look like this. And we're gonna be toggling these three little circles. This is motion blur, okay? So you can turn that on now if you'd like, but we're gonna be using that. All right, let's go ahead and open up our text and we have this animate play button. Let's go ahead and start with opacity. Let's open up the range selector. You should now see animator one and we have a range selector. So the range selector, as I already said, it's now a range of characters. So we have start and end. If you hover over one of the endings of our range, this is the start range selector, and this is the end, right? So if we drag this over, we can see it move character by character. It's also counting the space in between each word. That's important. Another detail, as I drag this, you can see the start range selector change because it is calculated, it is this percentage inside of the range that we are selecting. So if I were to select from the back, what is our value? 12%. So we are selecting 12% of our range. Pull this back to 100%. So if you would like to learn more and dive really, really deep into the range selector, I suggest you watch our masterclass that we just posted. Hope you guys like it. But for this, let's go ahead and move forward into the advanced tab, and we're going to start making our keyframes. So we made our selection, which is the entire range, 0 to 100, and below that is our offset. So our offset is going to 
function as our animator. Think of it as a vehicle that makes the animation happen. Go ahead and drag around your offset and you should see the range selector move within your range. So an interesting detail about the offset is that it can actually go to negative 100 and 100. And we'll get into that in a minute. So let's go ahead and make a keyframe with our offset at 0% at the very beginning of our text layer. Awesome. We're going to go through one second and we're also going to make another keyframe, but this keyframe is going to be at 100%. So now if you drag your playhead to the front, we can see that animation go through character by character. Now, percentage, you can use index, which is it's just going to count what is inside of your range selector. We have 21 characters, but you can see that it's counting 26 because it also counts the spaces in between the words. But I'm going to leave it with percentage for this. Now, characters. Our first animation, we have to use characters. We are good there. But let's go ahead and look at the other options. We have characters excluding spaces. So now if I scroll through, I can see the range selector jumping over those spaces. So we're excluding the spaces. Now we have words. It's now going to jump word to word. Okay. And then the last one is line by line, which I think you can infer it's going to jump from the first line to the second line. And there you go. But we're going to keep it. Let's go back to characters and let's start our first animation. Let's make opacity to zero. So we're telling the range selector to, OK, we have this captured. Let's start to animate our first starting position. We're now making it with the property opacity. So we're saying, hey, start this animation at this point at 0%. And now that's all we have to mess with because if you go ahead and press play, there's your animation. Congratulations, you just made your first animation. All right, so next thing, we are gonna go about 15 frames after the animation is complete. And we're going to click and drag over our box so we can select both of our keyframes. Now I'm going to press Control C or Command C if you're on Mac, and then control V. So now we have the same animation just happening all over again, but we want this to be like an animation in and an animation out. So how we do that is we can click and drag over the two keyframes you just copied, and we're going to right click on them, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. Let's go ahead and play. It's animating in and it's animating out. Great work, let's go ahead and go to our next text layer. All right, next one is slide in word by word. Let's go ahead and open that up. Here's our next text layer. We're gonna open it up, animate. And if we're sliding in, that has probably something to do with position. So we're just gonna use position for this one. Let's open up our range selector. Let's go ahead and start keyframing from the very beginning of our layer. So make sure that your playhead is at the very beginning and you can go with page up and page down on your keyboard. That'll go frame by frame or you could hold down shift and jump 10 frames. All right, so we're at the front. We're gonna do the same thing, offset at zero, one second in time, and go to 100%. All right, we have the animation already working through our range. So let's open up advanced. Now we're gonna keep these the same, except we're gonna change the based on. We said word by word, so let's change it to words. I'm gonna go to the front and I need to tell the program, hey, we need to start at a different place than we are right now. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to drag the position out of frame. So my coordinates look like it's 1070. That looks good. Let's go ahead and press play. All right, there's our next animation. But I want to put a little bit of pizzazz and mustard behind it. So I'm going to hit motion blur, these three little circles. And that should give you the nice little blur coming in. All right, so we have the animate in. We want it to animate out. Control C, let's go to the 15 frame mark. Control V, with these selected, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Not bad, everyone. All right, let's go to the next one. This one is going to be scale up word by word. Let's go ahead and open it up, animate. So if we're scaling up, what are we using? We're using scale. Open up the range selector, same process. Offset at zero one second in time. Next one is going to be 100. So we have our animation already going through our range. Perfect. And now we need to tell it to start on scale. We want it to start at zero. 
and open up the advanced tab. And we said word by word. So guess what? Word by word. I'm going to do motion blur as well. And here we go. There it is. All right. We're going to copy these. Control C, go to 15 frames forward. Control V with these selected, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. So now we have our animate in and our animate out. Let's go to the next one. And this one's a little different. We're going to be adding a few things. So overshoot implies a delay. So we're going to be using two animators. So let's go ahead and start animation. We're going to do position because overshoot has to do with moving the text physically. And then as we saw in the example, we need it to fade in. So we're also going to add property opacity. Okay, so let's start with our first movement. Now with square, we can only go in between zero to 100. That's where it's gonna work because if I do something like negative 100, go one second forward and 100. We'll see on the animation that the range animates through twice. So why is this useful? Because square works pretty well with zero through 100, but with different shapes like ramp up, ramp down, triangle, round, and smooth, all of these do well with that negative offset value. And again, if you want to learn more about not only what do those do and what do those mean, I explain all of that in our masterclass video. All right, so from here, ease high and ease low, think of it as ease in and ease out. The parameters that I love using is having these at 50%. That makes it nice and smooth. It is uh, reminiscent of easy ease. So here we go. So we have those in place. Now let's go ahead and do, we're doing it characters by characters. We need for it to go down. So what we're going to do is let's do 300 pixels vertically down. All right, that's our first movement. Now we also need to tell it at the start, we need it to not be visible. So with opacity, we're going to do 0%. Let's do that first move. Looking good. So with overshoot, like I said before, we need a delay. So let's go ahead and make another animator. So if you wanted to add another animator, you can click your text layer, do animate, and just add another property. Or in this case, since it's overshooting the same exact animation, which is characters by characters, and it's using ramp up, we can make the delay with almost the properties that we already have. So let's go ahead and click on the animator, do control D or command D, and it's gonna duplicate this same exact thing. So let's open up that second animator, open up the range selector, and now everything's exactly the same. We do not need the opacity doubled right now, but we do need position. So let's go ahead and change that position to zero so it's not interfering with, with anything. And let's see where we can make our first mark. So the rule that I put in place for myself when I'm trying to make something look like an overshoot animation, I'm going to try and find the moment where the first animation hits a point to where it stops. The very first thing that stops. I can either choose a letter or a word. In this case, I'm going to use a word. And that first word is you. So I'm going to... Keep going page up, page down till I get to that first stop. So it looks like it's stopping at the 16 mark. So it's 916 on my project. So I'm going to take the both keyframes from the second animator and I'm going to drag it to that spot. There we go. And then you want the overshoot to finish rather quickly. So now we have this big delay here. My rule of thumb is to keep it between five frames. For this example, I'm going to do three frames. So let's do one, two, three, and I'm going to take that second keyframe and move it over. So on our first one, we're asking it to start out. Let's go to that first animation. We're asking the animation, okay, start down here, 300 pixels down, and then be invisible. And then we're asking it to animate through and rise up. Now for an overshoot, we need it to go up further and then come back down. So with this position property, we're going to have the animation go up. 
Now, a good way to check yourself as you add different animators is to use the eyeballs to have one of them play as you're working on the other. So I'm going to disable the first animator and I need to figure out how far I want this to animate up. I'm going to use a vertical parameter again, but now we're in our second animator and I'm just going to scoot it up. Let's do something like negative 40. And you can play that animation. So it's starting up and it's going down. In our first animator, we had the opposite. It's starting down and going up. So now that should have a good recipe to overshoot. Go ahead and enable our first animator and let's see. Look at that. So it's rising up, it's fading in. And then now it's connecting with that second animator and it's overshooting with the motion we made and it's coming back down and finishes out. Great work. So now how are we going to animate out? Same process like we've been doing this whole time. So I'm going to have my keyframes open, copy them, control C or command C if you're on Mac. Go forward 15 frames from our first animator. So that little 15 frame mark. Do control V. Okay, zoom out so I can see them. And our new animators, we're going to right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. Let's go ahead and watch. Fading in and up, fading out and down. Perfect. All right, let's go to our last one. So before we move to our last animator, it's actually pretty similar to what we just created. So if I wanted to replicate the same thing, we can make a preset. The way you do that is we can go ahead and close up these animators. We want to select each animator. You can hold down control and select all your animators and the transform settings. And we can go up and go to animation and we're going to do save animation preset. Go ahead and type in what you want to call this. So let's go ahead and call it for what it is. It is opacity overshoot position, something like that. And I'm going to click save. And now that'll show up in your effects panel in your animation presets. So if I go to my animation presets in my effects panel, open it up, user presets, and then we can find our opacity overshoot position. Okay, so let's go to our fifth example. I'm gonna go move my playhead to the front. This one is a little bit longer by design. You're welcome. Now I'm going to use my preset. I can drag and drop, and we already have some keyframes in there. Let's go ahead and open these up and see what we got. All right, so we can see all of our keyframes. It should be exactly the same of what we just made, but this one has to be a little bit different. They're using scale instead of opacity. So I know on that first animator, I can go ahead and select opacity and get rid of it, but we can add scale. Let's go ahead and add scale. And that scale is everything scaling up. So we're going to tell the animator to start at zero so it's not visible. So now we have something like this. I'm going to get rid of these two animating out keyframes because we don't need them right now. We need to make sure that we get the first keyframes right. So we have scale up and then we have that delay character by character. That looks good. So I'm going to exaggerate this. I'm going to go down a little bit further with 400 and then I'm going to change my second range selector's position to negative 60. Let's go ahead and look at that. Yeah, it has like a really far jump into the animation. Okay, I'm happy with that. So our next animation we want to worry about is, okay, how do we get the colors? And then how do we get it to wiggle so much? We're going to be adding an additional animator. So before I do that, I'm going to click on my text layer. And if this isn't already open, you can find it under your window and open up properties and it'll show you all of your text settings. Now I'm going to change the fill color to a gray. This is going to be 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. We have this gray and then over in my text layer, I'm going to select it, click animate, and we need a position, All right? So our third animator has a position and I'm also going to add to that third animator a fill color and we're going to go with RGB. And now on our fill color, we want this to change. We're going to do F4FF00. It's like this yellow. So we're telling our animator to start at with a yellow fill right now, but nothing's changing because we haven't programmed this to wiggle or do anything else. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add a selector wiggly. So now automatically we have the fill color working with the wiggly selectors randomizer. 
That looks pretty good on its own, right? But we want it to wiggle. Let's go ahead and move these position parameters. So I'm gonna open it up and just show you uh, the settings. With wiggles a second is probably what you'll play with most. And the higher value you have, the crazier that it's going to be. But I'm gonna keep it at two so it's more subtle. And I'm only gonna move four pixels and five pixels for the X value and the Y value. So let's go ahead and look at that. It's a nice subtle wiggle all around. So now we need this to animate out. So what do we do on all these examples? We copy all the keyframes, control C. I'm gonna start from the first animator and go forward 20 keyframes. And then I'm gonna do control V. And on these, I'm gonna right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. So let's go ahead and watch that animation. Coming in and going out. Now, don't be afraid to make this animation longer. I think I'm going to opt for that. So I'm going to scoot these over kind of towards the end of my layer. I'm going to have that last keyframe stop at the 16 mark. I'm going to move my work area over and let's watch our work. Coming in, wiggling, looking good, and it goes out. So we finished all of our animations. Let's go into Premiere Pro and we can take a peek at what we just created on this dynamic link. Let's go ahead and play. Fade it. in. Here's our first one. I'm going to speed through these. Slide our in, second. Scale our up, third. Our position fourth. Overshoot, character by character. Position and overshoot, our fifth. Wiggle. Great work, everyone. So, say that we lose this dynamic link. It just vanishes. But we still have the After Effects project. It would be helpful to know how to export these out, right? So, we can do that. So, I'm going to go to where all of our compositions exist for these animations. And then I'm simply going to go to File export, add to render queue. I'm gonna go to the output module first. Depending on what system you have, I'm on PC with Max, they usually default to animations. So right now mine says Apple ProRes, but I need it to say animation. So I'm gonna go to the format options, go to animation, click okay. We're good there. Now I don't have any audio, so I'm gonna turn off the audio, but we do need to change the channels. So it needs to be RGB plus alpha that has the transparent background. So we're gonna click okay. Go to output two, and now we just have to name this project and put it to where we want it. So I'm gonna put it in the project that I'm working on right now. I have it named, I'm gonna save it, and then I'm going to hit render. So having it animate as its own asset itself is easy to distribute amongst other editors than it is with dynamic links in my experience. So I like to know how to export them out as a backup. All right, so let's go ahead and find that .mov file that we just created. All right, I'm dragging it into my project and there it is. So if I just go ahead and disable this first one, it should be exactly Fade what in, you created. Fade character by character. Slide Speed in, word by these, word. these, looking Scale good. Up, word by word. Position overshoot. And there it is. Character. Position overshoot wiggle. Fill. But that does it for this video. Thank you all for tuning in. Please check out our paid products if you want to learn new techniques. See what we're working on on a month to month basis. We got some really cool stuff in there. And then please check out the range selector playlist that we have currently on this channel. I talk about all the nuances that I know because I'm trying to have the most accurate and best tutorial out there on this subject because it is deep. It is a very deep subject. So please check that out and leave me your feedback. I'm trying to learn as well. We've got a lot of the work. So thank you for tuning in again. We will see you soon.